Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be doing a breakdown episode. So a little bit longer than the rundown series that we've been doing where it's been eight-ish minutes of kind of just quickly going through a brief overview of a knife. And today we're going to be doing a, a longer, more rambling version of the knife, providing more details, size comparisons, um, and, and just overall more thoughts. So hopefully we'll try to keep it under 20 minutes, but this, this will be a, a bit of a longer series, just kind of dedicated to providing more information. So today, Microtech Amphibian Ramlock folding knife. This is the aluminum version. Um, we have the Ramlock system here where you see the coil spring inside um, and the piece of metal, kind of Microtech's version of a crossbar lock, similar to the also relatively new MSI. This is the polymer MSI version, which I also have a rundown video of. Um, it's like eight minutes long or something, I think. Um, I'll kind of put that right here just so you can see and watch it. Uh, but same uh, line of knives, Microtech's initial release of the Ramlock system. Both similar in size. They're, they're pretty big, robust folding knives. Um, both super well made, no play in the blade at all. Both came very sharp, so no complaints about that at all. The polymer MSI, which is what this is, this is just kind of like the plasticky polymer version, is I think anywhere from 170 to 180. Um, and then you can get, I think, G10 for those as well. It's a lot more expensive. But this is the Amphibian. Um, it's a newer adaptation of a very old Microtech model, which is also called the Amphibian. But this is now with the Ramlock system. I believe the old one was uh, button automatic. Um, I'll have to look that up. But this is their new rendition of it. I have completely fallen in love with this thing. Um, it's pretty expensive. I think they retail for about $300 based on, you know, whether or not you get the serrated edge. Um, but in that, that range, but again, I, I, this is certainly feels like a, a very high quality knife where a lot went into the production of it. Um, so we'll kind of compare it to some other things in size here. Um, what I compared the MSI to was the Benchmade Adamus folder, which Benchmade's kind of indestructible, super heavy-duty, hard-use folder. That's what they marketed it as. And as you can kind of see, they're very similar in size here. So I'll kind of put the MSI back out here as well. Um, all, all very similar in size. They're about four inches on the blade, and, and I think maybe in the range of four and a half to five inches on the handle. Um, but... All of Microtech's new folders use this M390. Um, you can see on the blade there, M390 MK, which is Microtech knives. It's the special blend of M390 done by Bowler, which allegedly has better edge retention. Um, I'm not sure if that's you know true. That's what they say. Um, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But fantastic steel on these, very premium steel. Um, we'll kind of continue here with some other size comparisons. So this is the Case Marilla. Um, not a super common or, or popular knife, but I figured I'd put it there. It's it's a pretty standard size pocket knife. Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Um, pretty common knife. Roughly roughly similar in size in the, in the handle, um, but Amphibian is a little bit longer. MSI also is a little bit bigger than the Paramilitary 2, um, but but roughly you know the same size. Pretty pretty long. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see how the, the width compares. It, it, I would guess, yeah, that's what it looks like. The, the Amphibian is a little bit thicker than the Paramilitary 2. Um, kind of makes sense. Now we'll move on here. We'll put the Buck 110. I try to do that because I know a lot of people have a Buck 110, just so you can kind of get a, a feel for that. And then we'll also do the Benchmade Bug Out that I still have not sent in to get the spring fixed. But you'll see it is, it is as the Buck 110 is kind of a bigger, heavier folder. This also is very big. Um, here's the Bug Out, which I think the Bug Out's three and a quarter inch blade. Um, so again, pretty standard pocket knife size. Like usually I would say pocket knives are three to three and a half inches. Um, anything below that's probably on the smaller end. Anything above that is on the bigger end. Um, so we can see, you know, Definitely more than the bug out. Definitely bigger than the bug out. Definitely bigger than the Buck 110. Um, in terms of weight, the Buck 110 still is heavier, but this is a pretty heavy knife, um, just because it's you know it's got 
not full steel liners, but it does have liners that kind of taper up into the top here. And it also has, you know, this, these aluminum scales are very thick, as you can kind of see from that. Like they're, they're very thick scales. So it's milled out a little bit inside there. I'm going to try and get it in the camera. Um, yeah, you can kind of see some of the, the milling out in there. But it is, it is a pretty heavy knife, um, especially compared to the polymer MSI. Um, but lastly, we'll kind of put it up here against, this is the Native Chief from Spider Co., which I also kind of thought might be similar size. And we'll grab the Benchmade 940. So I'm kind of surprised this is actually bigger than the Native Chief. Um, I, I didn't really realize that until just now. The, the blade looks like it's, it's similar in size, but the handle is definitely a little bit longer. It kind of falls away here. Put it like over it. So, but I would say it definitely is comparable in size to the Native Chief. Um, this is a factory second Native Chief. You can see by the little notch on the blade there. Also an M390. Um, this is a great, a great knife. I, I really like this one. I'll have to do a video on this one. Um, I haven't used it in a little bit, but um, also much bigger than the Benchmade 940 and much heavier too. Um, you can kind of overlap there so you can see. See the end of the handle sticking out, um, but yeah, just just trying to emphasize that this is a very big, bulky and and robust knife. Now, in terms of wiggle on the blade, absolutely none. I I cannot cannot move this at all. I'll try and show it here. Um, similar to the MSI, which I was very surprised by because a lot of Benchmades, this crossbar locking system, there is a little bit of wiggle usually. Not always, um, like on my Adamus, there's not, but I feel like that's a little rare. And now there is a little bit after I've, I've kind of used it a little bit. Um, but that, that is rare for a crossbar lock to lock up that well and, and be that sturdy. So like, I, I don't feel that I could, even if, even if I tried to, I don't think I could kind of wiggle it. Um, a lot of people expressed concern about the Ram lock system. That was when these first came out. I think I think these have probably been out for close to a year now. Maybe maybe a little bit less. Maybe a little more. Um, but there were videos going around on the internet of the ram lock. So specifically on the MSI, I think it was how it started, where people would take it and whack something on the spine of the knife, and the lock would disengage because it was not going all the way forward and and actually engaging on the blade. So for a few months, that put a lot of people off buying uh, Microtex Ramlock like series. So you can kind of see in there how it engages. Let's try to show that. However, this is a November of 2023 production knife. My MSI is December of 2023. And I took this outside last week or maybe over the weekend it was and I whacked this on a tree stump as hard as I could several times and there was no there's no blade play there was no lock disengagement there was nothing that went wrong with it so I I am confident that they have fixed that problem since all those videos came out um, but but it is something to notice if you're if you're worried about that it could be something to look into but I I would like to kind of squash those claims now and I don't feel that that is an issue any longer. Um, I have not whacked this one because I've only had it for a couple days now, but again, the MSI I think shows that they fixed it. I do not feel any signs of this disengaging at all. Like it's it's pretty rock solid on there. Um, on some of the videos I noticed, it did not look like it took a lot to kind of disengage the lock. It looked like it just a light tap would disengage it. So there we go. Maybe it was a little harder than that, but it, it did look pretty light and it, nothing, you know, we'll see nothing happen here, but that, that put me off of buying these Ramlock knives for, for quite some time. So I will, I will say I'm very pleased with, with that and how they've held up. Um, I kind of mentioned before they did come razor, razor sharp out of the box as all Microtech knives do, which I, I really appreciate. Um, I think Microtech in terms of brands, um, I, I, there have been some comments on some of my, my shorts videos and some of my other videos about people saying that Microtech has kind of fallen off and, and their quality is not as good as it used to be. I can't really speak to that because I did not have a Microtech, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, whenever the company was great. Uh, but I will say I got an Ultratech, my first ever Ultratech, not that long ago. 
and also came razor sharp, had no issues with this. It feels fantastic. MSI feels fantastic. I bought another Ultratech on sale and actually returned it, but that was actually more to get this than because I did not like the Ultratech. Uh, but the, like, I, I have no complaints about Microtech. They are, they are more expensive. Um, that is, that is certainly true, but I think you really do get great value when you, when you spend that kind of money on a knife. Now, Benchmade, on the other hand, um, they have jacked their prices up a significant amount. And I, I will admit to having some problems with the springs. I'm not a Benchmade hater. Like I, I think they make great products and, and knives, but for the price, um, this MSI, Retails for about the same as a bug out. And we can see here, like the bug out has a broken spring and I haven't had it that much longer than MSI. Um, again, same price. Uh, in my opinion, if you can get your hands on an MSI and then hold a bug out, you, you'll be able to see, okay, there actually is a difference in what the value should be. For, like what I'm paying, this is what I should be getting for $180 or whatever. And, and even still, some people think that that's overpriced for this. Um, and, and maybe, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but it, this is certainly a great entry into Microtech, the Polymer MSI. Um, but back to the amphibian here, kind of what we've been going through this video. I mean, it has a recurve blade, so you can kind of see there's a little bit of a recurve in there. I, I really like the look of this. This has very quickly become my favorite pocket knife. I've had it for, I think, yeah, that's why I said like a week or so. Already used it a bunch. Can't really tell. There's some scratches kind of on the, let's see in the light there, you can kind of see there's some scratches there from um, cutting things outside with it and whacking it on a, a tree to kind of cut some wood. But I, I think this is just a, a gorgeous looking knife. Um, it is a little big, so so that's another thing I'll, I'll say. Um, Holding in the hand, there's this little, I don't know what you call it, milling that you can put your finger in when you're holding it like this to cut. Um, there's more jimping on the front of the blade. But when you reposition to try to close it, unlike, so for example, the Benchmade Adamus, where it's it's kind of flat on the bottom there, versus the, the Amphibian, it is a little oddly shaped to reposition to try to close it. Um, because I, I don't really have big enough hands to just close it like, I don't know, however you'd close a normal crossbar. Um, so I do have to reposition it. It feels a little awkward. Whereas the Adamus, it kind of just rests in your hand flat and then you can close it. Similarly, the MSI is a little more flat to close and you can kind of get a better grip on it to close. Um, just because the handle is slightly, slightly shorter. So that's something to consider. Make sure you can um, get in a store and, and hold this in your hand before you, you buy it. Um, but that is something to note. It is just a little something to get used to. You know, I'm not, I'm not used to that when I'm messing with a, a crossbar lock type knife. Um, another thing to note, the lock stick on this was really, really bad when I purchased it. Um, I held it in the store. I noticed that and, and figured it would wear in. There was, there was a little bit on the MSI when I purchased it. Um, but the MSI, it wore in amazingly. Like there's, there's not a hint of it now, like at, at all here or see, but not, not at all. Amphibian, there is a little bit, but it has gone away significantly. And I've, as I've kind of just been trying to break it in a little bit. It is, it is worn in very well, especially compared to what it was. When I first got it, I mean, it was hard. Like I really had to like pull this back and, and disengage the lock, but it is, again, I will say it is worn in very well. And that is not something that I can say for, not, not all of my Benchmades, but a lot of them. Um, a lot of them I've had for a while and they still have that little stick kind of that you have to get past, um, that, that clicking noise before you can close the lock. Uh, but this this has broken in tremendously. Um, there is that little here. I'm trying to show, there's a little squeak that I have not been able to oil out. So I'm going to spray it with some compressed air and see if I can kind of get some of the the muck out of there. I was, you know, this was dropped in the dirt a few times, and 
Um, I, I tried to wipe off the outside and, and clean it off, but there might be a little bit of dirt in there that's that's causing that. But no no functional issues again at all. Um, just that little squeak. I'll try to oil it a little better and get the oil more kind of in there. Um, and if it doesn't go away, I can you, know, you can always take it apart and and clean it and, and put it back together. That is a thing. Um, Microtech's warranty now. As long as you do not break the knife or alter the function, you can take it apart and it will not void the warranty. Um, same with Spyderco. If you have a Spyderco, I think that was their policy a few years ago where if you took apart the knife, it would void the warranty. Um, now, as long as you put it back together properly and it still functions as it should, they will honor the warranty, which I think is fantastic because I, I really prefer to not have to send in, you know, I wish Benchmade could just send me a spring for not that one, sorry, like this, just so I could quickly take the scale off, pop the spring in and, and fix it. But no, I have to send it in, pay for shipping and then wait, um, you know, two, three, four weeks to get it back, which, you know, kind of a pain, but um, not bashing Benchmade's warranty at all. I think it's still fantastic, but I really prefer to kind of do my own maintenance. Um, other thing I will say, I think these are unlike, so unlike the Ultratech, Microtech has their proprietary screws. I don't know what they're called, but like the funky looking screws on there. Um, so it's much more difficult to take apart. Benchmade, or excuse me, the, the new Ramlocks put in torque screws. So I think I did hear someone say that I think this is a T20, if that, if that uh, matters to anyone. This is a 10. It does not fit in there. So I would guess 20 or whoever said that is, is probably correct. I don't have a 20 on me right this second. Um, but the other ones I think are probably eight. We'll see here. This is eight. Yeah, so these are eight, the, the body screws, um, as well as the clip screws, also eight. Um, one nice thing about the, the pocket clip, so you can see this little metal plate here, they include that, so you can kind of take it off and, and flip it back and forth with, if you want to switch the, the pocket clip. Um, the pocket clip on this thing doesn't, like I, I was kind of thinking, oh, it doesn't really look like a, a good pocket clip, it's, it's probably not going to work that well. I, I don't mind it at all. Um, especially compared to the MSI's pocket clip, which is a, a deep carry. And it's got these screws that are sticking up, which is a, a huge pain in my opinion. Um, this one is just, I think it's titanium if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it, it clips in the pocket really well. It's not hard to take out. It doesn't screw up my, my jeans at all. Um, and mess up kind of the, the lining of my pocket. However, the screws on this suck. I mentioned that in the, the previous video. I don't, I really do not like the the way that the screws kind of come up like that. So you have to push it in over, over the screws. Um, but this pocket clip has actually really impressed me. I, I've been really happy with it. Again, I, I just, like I'm raving about this knife because I, I really do like it. Um, I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. I, this thing feels fantastic. I was, my only concerns at the beginning were the lock stick and this kind of squeaky noise, which I, I'm sure I'll be able to get rid of. I don't think that's that's an issue. That's probably more. I just need to clean a little bit better. But the lock stick, is, it is worn in very nicely. Um, lock up, super solid. And, and again, um, just absolutely have fallen in love with this thing. So if there's anything else that you would find helpful, any other information that you want to know, trying to cover everything in these longer breakdown videos. Um, but if, I, if there's something that I missed or glossed over, please just let me know and I'll be happy to either make a separate video about it or kind of just respond to your, your comment. And I'm happy to do this with other knives that I've done previously. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, whatever is helpful to you all. I, I just hit 400 subscribers and I'm, I'm super, super grateful for that. It's fantastic that a lot of people are enjoying this stuff that I'm putting out. It makes me really happy. Um, and I hope to, again, provide as much information as possible to those that, that know a ton about knives and are looking into getting something like this or that they don't know anything about knives and maybe you want to just look at, you know, a buck one ten. Like they, they're just now getting into it. They weren't really taught anything. That's where I was. And I didn't even know, you know, I knew about this, but, um, from, from the beginner to the, the expert is, is who I'm trying to reach with all this, this content and these videos. And I hope to provide something for, for everybody. So again, I'm, I'm here for you. Just let me know what you'd like to see. 
and that will that will do it with this video um but thank you a ton for watching and make sure you're subscribed to stay tuned for the next one